My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 3,051 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Hey everyone, uh, just want to start off today um, by noting that uh, I do have uh, the resumes of a couple of people who were laid off. Um, they are ServiceNow professionals. Um, also have the resume of an individual who has a background implementing Microsoft Azure. Um, so if you uh, are an organization and need some, some talent, uh, please just let me know and I'll go ahead and hand those uh, resumes over to you. Um, and there's no charge with that, I'm completely free. I'm just trying to help people out. Um, in this uh, this strange time that we're going through right now. So if you are employed, uh, just be thankful that you're in this um, in this great profession of ours, uh, helping our customers out, get things done. All right. So today, what we're going to talk about is the incident management application and how we can enhance it to track things. Like uh, if a priority changes, an assignment group changes, an assign to changes, a category changes, or a uh, state goes into pending and we want to count how many times that occurs throughout the life cycle of a ticket. Now these are um, requests that I've received, oh, I don't know, um, probably from day one of implementing this platform. So what I did was I created um, these uh, 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 fields that you see right here which are all integer fields and we can go ahead and take a look at the at the fields now so I created five dictionary entries again this is uh, what we're looking at right now is uh, incident.config or if you were um, in the actual form itself let me scoot this over here and we right click go to configure all that's another way to get to um, the screen here that we're looking at so right here, I'm on the dictionary entries tab. So I created five um, for each one of those. They're all integer um, fields. So type is integer. The default value is zero. And then I've implemented business rules to go ahead and count every time one of these changes. And I'll show you the different um, conditions that I use because I think that'll be very helpful in, in getting a, um, a good understanding of, of how this works. So, and we can just preview the, the five um, that I'm about to show you. So um, one is state changes to on hold. Um, there's a priority change counter and assigned to um, this one I, or these two down here. Um, I called COVID-19 and, and we'll see how um, the conditions um, were um, put in business rules. Okay, so I'm just going to use this new new record here and we'll see that <clears throat> this is a, a new record. Nothing really special about it. I don't have anything mandatory here. Um, I have these as read only because I thought, you know, it's probably a good idea to make sure no one can manipulate these. So I'm going to save this record. And now what we'll see is this new record will go away. Great. Um, generally, you'll have your incident number up here. I think I changed the display value on this um, table or messed with it somehow when I domain separated my environment. So um, that kind of got hosed. So we don't really have a category or anything going on here. So this is very unlike your, your normal environment. So the first one we're going to take a look at, which is what everyone wants to know, is like how many times does a ticket go in pending, right? So right now we have a status of new. And then uh, what we're going to pay attention to right here is the pending counter field. So when I change it, I'm going to change it to on hold. Um, that's the condition I have. So if we take a look at the actual business rule itself, um, I did state equals on hold. I was a little bit lazy here. I didn't have, um, I don't know, I didn't have enough energy to create just a solid pending one. I have a pending supplier and a pending shipment but the gist of it is state and our operator is note, note this right here changes to on hold when is it running um, before an update now when you create a business rule and you don't have this advanced check mark here you're not going to see that before so i just want to note that and <clears throat> i did the um in, in the advance here that's why um, i need this opened up right that's why it's advanced is because i need to script this out 
So what I'm saying here is current dot u pending counters the name of the field and then add one to it every time um, this condition uh, this filter condition occurs, right? So if we go back to our incident here, uh, I'm going to change this to on hold, and now I'm going to hit save, and we'll see that our pending counter changes to one. <clears throat> okay, so that was our first one. Our second one is priority change. So what are the conditions here? Almost the same thing. Priority changes to one, <clears throat> and then our advance is current dot u priority change count. It'll increase by one. Great. So we're going to change impact. And remember priority. Most of your operations are probably going to use this impact urgency matrix here to influence priority. So we'll click save. And then we'll see that changes there, right? So then our third one here, assign two changes. So this one, um, I made sure that assign two is not empty um, in addition to changing. And then also it's on update. Again, our advanced condition here is going to be current dot assigned to change counter, whatever the, the field name is, and same thing, plus one. So we'll go back to our incident. <clears throat> I'm gonna add myself here. Uh, I'll just put an IT admin, that, that'll work. Okay, so assignment group is mandatory when I do that, right? But I got this handy little disable mandatory field, so I'm gonna do that <laughs> just to make this work without having to fill out the assignment group. Okay, fantastic. So now we saw that one changed, right? Right here. Now we get into a couple of unique ones. And I thought for COVID-19, probably some of you have either set up a category um, or maybe an assignment group that's called COVID-19. So here I create a one called, or a, a, I create a filter condition that says changes from. So anytime it changes from COVID-19 to another group, um, or it could even go to blank, right? Um, although the the uh, field that or the assignment group field I believe out of the box is mandatory so something would have to go in there right so if we take a look at this I'm going to change it to COVID-19 just to start off here and we're going to note that it does not change right so our assignment group counter change it did not move now when I change it from assignment group COVID-19 to let's say Aspen now we can go ahead and hit save and now we'll note that it changes right so that that's one place where you're gonna wanna you know kinda experiment with those conditions um, and again you know I was doing that that one on on update so um, that's pretty much the way we would play this and then our last one is category change this one we'll see here this has a lot of conditions here and basically what I'm saying is um, when the category, and if we take a look at the categories here, so we have, I don't know, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight categories here. Uh, so, and not, not including none, right? So for COVID-19, that's what we're tracking. We're saying it has to change from COVID-19, um, from one of these, right? So the scenario is this, when it first comes in, someone's going to categorize it. And then if it changes to COVID-19 from there, then we want to go ahead and do the same thing with the advance, right? We want to go ahead and count that. So um, in this instance, if it goes from uh, none to COVID-19, let's watch what happens. So we have none here. Now we'll change it to COVID-19 and we'll hit save. Nothing happens, right? Perfect. Because what we're trying to um, track here is if the the ticket was basically I don't want to say misdiagnosed but we want we're trying to attract every time it changes it gets the category changes um, after the initial one so sometimes you'll get requirements like that like I don't want to track the initial categorization but we want to track it after um, the initial one and see if it changes so now if I change it to category uh, to COVID-19 we'll hit save And then we had a fill in there. So I hope that helps you out in your daily operation. But I thought those are the top five that I've received in the past. And, um, you know, if you learned something today about the filter conditions um, or just, you know, how to make the integer field kind of counts go up in number, um, go ahead and click like and feel free to share the video. 
My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we just unlock the power of ServiceNow.